Hi everyone, today we're live from the Women in the World Summit 2018 in New York. Uh, I'm Leila Hotei, I'm a partner with DCG based in the Middle East and I focus on human capital development. Hi everyone, I'm Pilar Landon, I'm a consultant out of our Chicago office. I just started, with, I'm, in with, I'm in my first year at BCG, I do mostly aerospace and defense work and it's been a, it's been a great experience so far. So this is the second year in a row where BCG is co-sponsoring this event, the Women in the World Summit. Uh, it's a summit that was launched in 2010 and it's become one of the largest and foremost forums to showcase the work of women leaders and trailblazers around the world. Uh, this year we've talked about many different uh, topics at the summit, uh, the rise of the Me Too movement of course, uh, the global refugee crisis and its impact around the world on women and men, um, and changing attitudes towards sex and relationships in the digital era and more. Uh, and I was honoured to be among the women speaking at the summit around the role of women as leaders in the workplace. It's been a great couple of days so far. We're about halfway through. Really looking forward to this afternoon's slate of speakers. So let's get started. Absolutely. So I know this experience is a little bit uh, um, overwhelming for you, maybe. <laughs> how, how insightful have you found these last two days? It's just been an incredible uh, couple of you know hours so far yesterday and tonight. The thing that I've really taken away, though, is that we're seeing examples of women who are in leadership roles working on women's issues and then examples of women who are in leadership roles working on humanitarian issues. So the diversity of experience and the diversity of leadership and all of the different messages to take away have been phenomenal and it's just a great experience overall. So from a speaker's perspective, because you were in a panel earlier today, which was awesome, um, how does it feel to be addressing so many young women who might look up to you as a role model? So it was, it was great, honestly. It was lots of fun and it was very inspiring as well. Um, and there were many messages that came from, uh, from, from today's panel. I mean, two, two messages that came from, uh, from my panelists today that I'd love to, to share here on this Facebook Live. The first one from uh, the designer, famous designer, Diane, um, mm -hmm. Diane von uh, Fessenberg was, um, if you doubt yourself, you're giving power to your doubts. Yeah. And that's really important. The importance of self-confidence and continuing to rebuild and build again that confidence cannot be uh, overstated. Um, yeah. The other one I think is also critical, which is you know the world of girls, of my daughter's generation, of girls of tomorrow, will depend on how we're bringing up our sons. Yeah. And so that's a that's a key message that I think we need to each think about as a as a young as a mother to really think about. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you won the uh, the BCG internal essay contest on pressing for progress for International Women's Day. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Of course. So. Um I co-authored an essay um, along with five of my teammates, one of whom is holding our teleprompter here, <laughs> being a great sport. Um, but we thought it was that we had an interesting experience being a six-person, all-female team, apart from our two male principal and partner in, in you know, the, the more client-facing like leadership roles. Um, and we just had so many great takeaways from that experience. And we were working with an aerospace client where there aren't a lot of women to begin with in that industry. And so to have six of us working day to day with what was really a bunch of male engineers and you know they kind of were like okay who are you guys like what do you know about this we felt like the bar was a little bit artificially high at first but the way we were able to overcome that and the messages and, and the takeaways that we took from that as a team how we bonded um, our learnings together how we actually felt very empowered by the end of it to deliver messages from a different perspective that we thought actually carried a lot more weight and then if it was just delivered by someone who looked identical to everyone else in the room, we had that surprise factor. And I thought that that was a really interesting thing to share with the rest of the BCG community and ultimately with you know, whomever else reads that essay. So it's um, had fun on the team, had fun writing the essay, and it's a blast to be here. Sounds great. Specifically, you were talking about, about you know, how women can empower other women and the importance of that in, in moving the needle. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we actually had one uh, client who is a very senior woman she was very well respected by everyone at the client, at the, at the firm. And um, we actually thought she, she took a liking in us almost immediately. And for me, it was such a great example to see how important it is for women who are in senior leadership roles to really empower and bring up people coming up behind them. And I hope that someone did that for them. I certainly know that people have done that for me and I look forward to doing that myself when I'm in, in that position. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um. So I know on your panel you mentioned uh, the role, the you know how important role, mo role models are and the importance of mentorship, and you mentioned sponsorship yeah. specifically, um, which is something we talk a lot about at BCG. So what it, what is your perspective on finding female role models, and why do you think that's particularly important? 
I think it's critical uh, to, to have female role models because you, you need to be able to, to, to really have a deep belief that you can make it. And to have that deep belief that you can make it, whatever make it, whatever success uh, has, has, whatever the shape of success, you need to be able to visualize it. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's critical to have sort of those female role models. Uh, role models that I have myself, so Malala Yousafzai, for example, she's re she was really brave in risking her life for education, and she's changed the world of many girls around the world uh, as, as a result. Angela Merkel, because she, mm -hmm. she just did it her way. She didn't have to act like a man, and yet she became one of the most powerful uh, women in the world and very influential while still being herself. So um, what about you? What, what, who are your role models? Um, well, I've actually, uh, so I'll talk about my male role models because one of the important pieces of the conversation we've been having inside is how important men are to, to this movement overall. It's not just women moving the ball forward for women, but it's about men being part of that too. Um, so I've been very fortunate to, to have who I would consider two sponsors who are both men at BCG. One of them was the principal on the project that I mentioned. Um, the other was a partner I worked with previously. But when I think about how we define sponsorship and it's the person who would go up to bat for you and how really has your back, it's those two people. Like I've already seen evidence of that um, in, in instances beyond what I've worked with them on specifically. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful for them for, for taking on that role and I hope that they continue to do that for me. Yeah, I can say that I have a similar experience. Sponsorship has been incredibly important in my career, both before BCG and then since joining BCG, uh, the OA of the Middle East, Jörg Hildebrand, was really, has really taken on a role as my sponsor and it made a huge difference in how I integrated BCG, how happy and successful I am. So, uh, you know, we need many more of these for, for all the, the high potential women out there. Um, so if you could address the, the, the worldwide audience of women in the world today, and if you could address men and women, what would be your ultimate message to them? I think the momentum that we've gotten this year has been great. I would say don't let that go because we're, at a, we're almost at a tipping point. I feel like we're just about there and we just need to keep pushing the ball up the hill so we can get there. So I think keep doing what we're doing, do more of it, continue to have these conversations, make it central, and, and we'll keep pushing for progress. Um, and so Layla, I know you have a daughter, you just mentioned you have three kids also. Um, so if you could personally address her from the Women in the World Summit, what would you tell her? What messages would you give to her? So if I could, uh, if I could talk to her right now, I'd say I love you and I miss you so much and I can't <laughs> wait to see you. Because honestly, all the rest she already knows. You know? <laughs> she's reading a book, she's 11 and she's reading a book right now, How to Be a Boss, you know, Conquering Life. My um, Can so, I get that book? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but, uh, but more seriously, don't grow up too fast. Uh, so it was really a pleasure seeing you here today. Yes, this is great. Um, thank you so, so much, everybody, for watching our discussion from here, from Women, Women in the World in New York City. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.